So, I heard you want to fly like a butterfly and sting like a bee. You've come to the right place. That was in the script, right? Just like my previous video with the long sword and the charge blade, I'll be telling you how I use the insect blade. And maybe this can help you get a grasp on how to use the weapon for yourself. Firstly, you need to know about the kinsect. A kinsect is that huge bug that you have on your arm. I'm not a fan of bugs, but don't worry, it doesn't bite you. And if there was a bug on my arm that big, I'd probably scream. Why are you running? Why are you running? There's two main types of kinsects. You have blunt and sever, and they're pretty self-explanatory. One bonks and the other can cut things off, meaning that you can either knock out the monster with the blunt kinsect, or you can cut tails off with the sever kinsect. Once you've purchased either one, you should nurture the kinsect, which is just a fancy way of saying you're upgrading the kinsect. Now you're probably looking at this thinking, what the hell do I use? Well, let's look at the stats. Avoid looking at the attack type because we've already talked about that. Plus, depending on which kinsect you've purchased, it will always be the attack type. So if you got a blunt kinsect, then it will always be blunt. The dust effect means what kind of powder cloud thingy that the kinsect will produce after hitting a marked monster. There's only four dust effects. Poison, blast, paralysis, and heal. Hitting the powder cloud thingy will trigger the dust effects. Poison, Blast and Paralysis will only affect the monster, and heal will only affect players, meaning that if you or any other player hits the dust, then that effect will be triggered. Element I'm going to ignore for now, power determines how much damage the kinsect will do, so higher the number, higher the damage. Speed determines how fast a kinsect can travel, and heal determines two things. One of them is how much can the kinsect heal you from a green extract obtained from the monster. I'll talk about the green extract later on in the video. The other thing is the rate of a kinsect regaining its stamina. Yeah, the kinsect has its own stamina bar if you haven't noticed. This will refill quickly or slowly depending on how high the heal stat is. Okay, now I can go back to the element stat. This is extremely simple. When you click on kinsect elements, you can apply any element on your kinsect. Whenever the kinsect hits the monster, then that element will be used. That's your kinsects. You can always mess about with all the different kinsects to fit your playstyle. Personally for me, I like to go with this specific kinsect. The reason why I use this kinsect is because it uses a heal dust effect, and it has the highest speed stat. This is great for quickly getting the extracts that I need on top of using the heal dust for whenever I need it. Now let's actually talk about using it in battle. The first thing that comes to mind when I use this weapon is to get the red extract straight away. Without the red extract, this weapon feels a bit clunky to use. To get an extract, you must direct your kinsect to attack a part of the monster. More specifically, if you want the red extract, you gotta hit the head of a monster using the kinsect. When your weapon is sheathed, you can press R2 or RT to instantly launch the kinsect in the direction you're facing. When it hits the monster, the kinsect icon will glow in color. This is when the kinsect has harvested an extract. You can also harvest an extract when you have your weapon out. If you hold down L2 or LT and press triangle or Y, you launch the kinsect in the direction that you're aiming at. Obviously, move around the right stick to adjust your aim. Once the kinsect has gotten an extract, call it back by holding down L2 or LT and press circle or B. When it returns, you should have one of the three icons glowing. There's four extracts that you can obtain from a monster. You can get red, white, orange, or green extracts. Each of them have their own effects and are obtained from different parts of a monster. The red extract will allow you to perform stronger moves. This is normally obtained from the head of a monster. The white extract increases the player's speed and vault height. To be honest here, I feel like it only affects the jump height. This is normally obtained from the legs or wings of a monster. The orange extract increases your defense by 5% and adds knockback resistance while you're attacking. This extract feels like it does nothing in my opinion, but whatever. This is sometimes obtained from the back or body of the monster. Finally, the green extract heals you, but unlike the other extracts, this one disappears once you've called it back. This is sometimes obtained from the tail of the monster. 
all of these extract locations are different to every monster which is why i said some of these extracts can either be normally or sometimes obtained from those locations all i basically do is spam the kinsec at different parts of the monster and eventually i should be able to get all the extracts these extracts will disappear after some time so keep an eye on them you can also get a bonus effect for having all three extracts on but i'm not gonna go into detail with that otherwise this video is gonna be longer than it already is the way i see it is getting free extract equals very good good lord the kinsec has so much info okay now that you have the red extract or all the others in one go what do you need to do next you can either start vaulting up or find an opening to attack the monster on the ground i prefer to vault up because it's more fun that way vaulting up allows you to use this weapon's aerial attacks Holding R2 or RT and pressing X or A will allow you to vault upwards. This weapon doesn't really do a lot of damage while airborne. Most of its damage comes from attacking the monster on the ground. The aerial attacks are mostly used to evade an attack, to mount the monster, or just to reposition yourself. These aerial attacks are influenced by the left stick, meaning that wherever you move the left stick, the aerial attacks will move the character in that direction. Pressing X or A will perform an evade. This is great for repositioning yourself or to dodge an attack. Pressing circle or B will perform the strong jumping advancing slash. Again, it's great for evading and it's used to keep yourself airborne. As long as you keep hitting the monster, you can stay airborne for quite some time. There is a limit of 5 times before landing, so you can't stay in the air forever. This move can also be used to mount the monster. But it is a weak move, so you might not mount the monster with this. Present Triangle or Y will perform the strong jumping slash. This ends your airborne assault and can be great for mounting on the monster. Present R2 or RT will perform a nosedive and can be used to mark the monster. Marking a monster will cause the Kinsect to auto attack the monster at the place you've marked. The Kinsect will leave a dust cloud and that cloud is dependent on which dust effect you've chosen. There's other ways of marking the monster which I'll tell you later in the video. The Kinsec will come back to you once it runs out of stamina. Lastly, pressing L2 or LT will allow you to clutch claw on the monster. I think you need to have the Iceborne DLC for this move, but I'm not entirely sure. Those are your aerial options. I would mostly spam between the evading move along with the strong jumping advancing slash to just stay airborne. Or I would perform the strong jumping slash to mount the monster. Now the veteran monster hunter players will shout at me saying that's not how you use the weapon or you're not using it efficiently. Alright calm down you DPS slaves I'll get to it right now. Most of your damage comes from your ground attacks so let's take a look at them. Moving in any direction and pressing circle or B will allow you to do a leaping attack. This is just great for closing the distance between you and the monster. I tend to do this attack quite a lot. Or you can press triangle or Y while moving to do a quick jab. Very good for quickly damaging the monster so that you don't fully commit to a combo and get yourself killed. Now the other attacks that you would do depends on how much of an opening that you have. If you think that you can do a couple of hits, then I would do the dodge slash move. This move does not have invincibility frames like the long swords EI slash or the foresight slash, but it's good for moving away from the monster. This move can only be done after an attack, so I would maybe do a quick jab and a dodge slash. Or you could just press triangle Y without moving to do the strong rise and slash combo and then do a dodge slash. Why is it even called a combo when it's just one button? Either way, you can do the dodge slash as long as it's not after any of the circle or B button moves. Because the next move after pressing B twice will always be the tornado slash. The tornado slash is the strongest ground attack. You'd mostly use this when there's an opening or just to end your ground combo. You can also do this move after free triangle or Y button inputs and then press in circle or B. I normally don't do this, but it's there for you to use. The good thing about the insect glaze ground attacks is that you can dodge to cancel your combo, where some other weapons can take a lot of commitment to perform some combos and you can't cancel out of them. To be honest, I mostly try to do the infinite combo, but I would normally do that when the monster is down. To do the infinite combo, you just need to loop over triangle or Y twice and press circle or B. 
and then you just loop back with the first button input. Just remember that while holding the left stick in the direction will influence some moves. For example, if I were to do the infinite combo while holding forward, you would always see me do the leap and slash when I press B. Whereas if I wasn't holding the stick, I would perform a strong wide sweep instead, which helps with staying in a single position rather than constantly moving forward. There's times when I mix up the infinite combo by using the dodge slash or just evade it. Even though that breaks the combo, or you don't do the combo, it's much better to cancel out the infinite combo because you don't want to get hit. You just got to pick the right moments to commit to a long or short combo. Remember when I talked about marking a monster? Well, the other way is to just press R2 or RT and this single move will mark a monster. Obviously, you're gonna have to be close to the monster to do this. However, there is another move that's more safer to do and that's done by holding L2 or LT to aim and press R2 or RT. This fires a slow projectile to mark a monster. It's safer because you can mark a monster from a distance. You can mark the monster at any time of the fight. I don't really have a preference for this. I just throw it whenever I need it because I mostly use the heat and dust cloud. Probably for the other dust effects, you would use it as much as you can. There's also a move to buff your kinsect, which is done by holding L2 or LT and pressing triangle and circle or Y and B together. However, you must have sling ammo, otherwise you won't be able to do this move. Doing this allows your kinsect to get a buff dependent on your kinsect and the sling ammo. The kinsect is also able to get two extracts at once in this state. To be honest, I forget about this move and barely use it. I should be using it though. This is an Iceborne exclusive move, so no Iceborne, no Kinsect buff. As for armor skills to use, you can go for Power Prolonger to increase the duration of the extract buffs, Airborne to increase the damage of your jumping attacks, Stamina Surge to quickly regain stamina after performing aerial attacks, and Constitution to also reduce the amount of stamina depleted from performing those aerial attacks. In the end, these are the things that you should remember when using this weapon. Always get the red buff at the start of your fights. As soon as it starts disappearing, be ready to get it back again. Be sure to get all the other buffs. Even though it feels like they barely do anything, just get them because they do help without you realizing it. Perform aerial attacks if you want to mount the monster, evade attacks, or to close the distance. Just don't rely too heavily on aerial attacks because they are not your main damage dealers. When the monster is active, try to perform small combos. Don't do moves that have high commitments to them. Otherwise, be prepared to get slapped. Perform the infinite combo when the monster is down. Just loop triangle or Y two times and press circle or B once and loop back again. Mark the monster whenever you feel like it. If you do want to keep damaging or make those dust clouds, then marking the monster will make the Kinsect auto attack and produce those dust clouds. Finally, you can also buff your Kinsect when you have Slinger ammo. Holding L2 or LT and pressing Triangle and Circle or Y and B will buff the Kinsect. Remember that this is an Iceborne DLC move, meaning that you're missing out if you don't have the DLC. All of this might sound like a lot to take in, but once you understand how the Kinsect works and how to just use the combos on the Insect Lave, this weapon is very simple. I hope you guys found this video useful in some way. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel for some more. And I shall see you guys later.